This lecture starts uh, a couple of lectures that are going to look at finishes. Finishes are meant to change the appearance, hand, or performance of a fiber, yarn, or fabric. So it's some kind of process it's, that's been done, either something applied or taken away from a fabric um, that alters how it performs. In this series of lectures, we're going to first start with uh, aesthetic finishes that alter the, the appearance and the hand of fabrics. Finishes, of course, can increase production time um, and can cost a little extra to, uh, to add whatever feature you, you want to add to that garment in the way that it performs for the customer. Um, the, the goal of this lecture is to understand how finishes contribute to end uses. You know, all semester we have looked at how all the variables that can alter performance in a garment, and it gets you know, kind of complicated to think about how to put things together that's going to be the, the perfect delivery for, for customers' wants and needs. You can alter fiber, you can alter yarn, you can alter fabric. And now once a product comes together, you can also um, provide additional um, performance, appearance, and, and hand alterations by using finishes. An unfinished textile is called a gray good. And so that's a, a textile that doesn't have any dye or finishing process to it yet. It's something unyet defined. We've looked at muslin in your, your swatch kit. That's a great example of a, a gray good or unfinished product. When we talk about finishes, I'm also going to talk about the, the durability of them or the time that they last on a product. A permanent finish lasts for the life of the, the textile. So as long as the textile exists, the, the finish will also be a part of it. A durable finish um, slowly decreases over time but it's expected to be durable over time and meaning that it lasts the, at least the consumer's um, life of the garment. A temporary finish is a finish that is washed off or dry cleaned. And so it remains on the product until it is cared for or cleaned. And a renewable finish is a finish that can be applied by the consumer or dry cleaner after that temporary finish disappears. So the first one we're going to look at is napping. It's a finish that changes the, the hand of a fabric and it's a permanent finish. Um, it's Once napping is done, it will stay there for the life of the garment. Napping is a process of raising fiber ends from a fabric's ground weave. It is it, it, it creates a kind of inexpensive process to create a, a fabric with more three-dimensionality to it. Napping usually involves rollers that are covered with bent wires um, that tease up fiber ends across the surface and your, your fabric becomes thicker and, and softer and warmer. You, as you can imagine, this is something that is has to be done with staple yarns, and so you need fibers available to be able to to be napped. And when you think of filament fibers, there's no fiber ends except at the end of the yarn, so you have to use staple or spun yarns. And so, napped cotton and napped wool fabrics are popular and appropriate. Fabrics can be napped on one or both sides. Um, and they can be knits, they can be plain or, or twill weaves as well. Think about um, some fabrics we've looked at like fleece and flannel. Flannel was typically a, a wool-based napped fabric. We looked at flannelette. It's a typically a cotton plain weave fabric that's one-sided. 
It's a one-sided nap and often printed. It doesn't insulate as well when it's one-sided like that and also because um, it wouldn't insulate as well as a, as a wool. Almost all of your napped fabric has apparel end uses. We can suede fabrics as well. Um, this is so usually applied to fabrics that have um, filament length fibers into it. And the suading on filament fibers actually improves the hand and comfort of the, of the fabric and creates a suede-like effect or a leather-like effect. So this will work on silk and nylon and polyester. Um, just think about, well, let me say that suading is a process where the fabric goes over rollers with a, um, what you might uh, associate with uh, like a sandpaper. And so when they go over these sandpaper surfaces, it, what, it makes it smoother. So you can think about sanding wood if you've ever done that. Wood can feel harsh, um, and once you sand it, it can get a, a very smooth and almost luster approach to it. So it's the, the same kind of process. Suede's can be used for apparel and interiors, um, and it is a permanent finish. Flocking is applying fine natural or synthetic fibers, very small fibers, to the surface of a base fabric. And so you see these patterns here. What's happened is perhaps that fabric has had a, a pattern of glue or resin put across the surface, and then it's put in an environment where fibers are blown across the surface and they attach to the areas where the, the glue is. I, this can imitate a lot of things. It can imitate a, a velvet. It can imitate extra yarn weaves um, or other pile fabrics. So if you look at the right, um, in an extra yarn weave, you'd expect on the other side to see yarns traveling across the back of that surface and coming to the front and making a design. So this is a very inexpensive way to, to imitate that look. And of course, it can be applied in endless patterns, whatever you can dream up. Flocking actually decorated walls as early as the, the 14th century when short silk fibers were used. At that time, we did have synthetic fibers, of course, but you would freshly paint the walls and then apply silk fibers to it. But flocking, as you know, we think about walls, flocking can be applied to many surfaces. It can be applied to a foam, a metal, a wood, a concrete, um, a wide variety. And many fibers can be used for flocking. You might see a rayon that's used on toys or cotton, lint or very small lint are used in greeting cards um, and packaging. But then you might see an olefin or a polyester used for like a ceiling in a window if you're trying to get a place where your window closes down um, and uh, it insulates better. And so those channels and windows can be flocked um, with something that would be more weather resistant. Um, but it can be used in cars and dashboards, a whole variety of places. Starching or sizing is a finish that changes the hand of a product. It adds stiffness, it adds weight, it adds body. Um, it is a temporary finish, um, but can be a re reapplied. Um, reapplying it might be time consuming, um, depending on the product. Parchmentizing is also a finish that affects drape. It is typically used on cotton or perhaps other cellulosics, but parchmentizing is strongly associated with sheer cotton fabrics and that um, a sulfuric acid is applied to it. And when that happens, it becomes a little more transparent when it's parchmentized um, and the weave shrinks a little bit. This, um, it's actually dissolving the cotton, so it has to be a very controlled process. But the result is a, a stiff, a sheer fabric that um, you wouldn't necessarily know was cotton. If you apply it all across the surface of a fabric, you um, create a cotton fabric called organdy.
but it is we associate it with cotton and um, it is permanent parchmentizing is a, a permanent change in the fabric that lasts over time Plissé is also parchmentized but applied in stripes and so these areas here where you see the the smooth line that's the the area um, where the sulfuric acid has been uh, applied so you would want to do this with uh, fabrics with a, a cotton uh, fiber content so this of course is imitating a, a seersucker a more expensive process that's made with a slack tension weave that needs an extra um, warp beam but the the chemical when it's applied to those areas it stiffens of course but it, it shrinks that area and then where it wasn't applied um, the it, it puckers Usually passe is not that dramatic of a fact as seersuckers are typically have a puckering that's more noticeable. Um, but you can see how a very regular this this pattern is with passe and it would be a little bit more unregular with a slack tension weave. Um, this texture can be permanent um, like a parchmentized surface, um, can be permanent like seersucker um, and imitates it more more cheaply you can also have plissés that are embossed or heat set and so this is a if you have a plissé that has a, um, a synthetic content to it like a polyester cotton that has a maybe higher polyester content it may have been embossed because you can't heat set your natural fibers but you can warm up your synthetic fibers um, and press on them with heat and shape them in a particular way and when they cool they will hold on to that shape. A embossed plissé is not as durable so we consider it a temporary finish um, and so it, it doesn't last as long as your parchmentized or your, your slack tension type of weave and it has a danger I think I've mentioned this before but it has the danger of a if you have too hot an iron on it, you could iron out the effect entirely. Also, we can use heat or the idea behind embossing a plissé to set all kinds of pleats and garments or all kinds of, of shapes. And so um, the scarf you see on the right, um, of course, has a luster to it. So it looks like it has some thermoplastic synthetic content and um, they've heat set a zigzag pattern onto it um, to give it that really beautiful textural effect. But we can do this large scale in, in garments in many ways, heat setting uh, features into it. The next few effects I'm gonna talk about or finishes are calendared finish. Calendar finishes tend to be mechanical processes. So before I talked, I, I, I mentioned parchmentizing. That's a, an additive finish um, where you've added a chemical and it's affect the, the performance, the aesthetic look of the, the garment, I should say. These um, use calendared finish, use mechanical processes to um, affect the aesthetics of a garment. And typically these have to do, we think of calendars as heated rollers. The, the first one I'm gonna talk about is a moire. It's a finish that changes how a fabric reflects light. You think of your, your ribbed fabrics and your rep fabrics, your taffeta and your file and your bengaline um, and other unbalanced plain weaves that have a, uh, a moire finish. And this looks like a wood grain or watermarked um, kind of wobbly look. So as you move the fabric, it reflects light differently along its length. We make this by taking two fabric layers of ribbed fabrics and pressing them together under heat. So we do it so the ribs don't exactly match up to each other. Um, but when you press them together, their faces, the rib face together, um, and slightly mismatch those ribs, some of the ribs are flattened in areas um, along the fabric and some stay round. And so the, the flattened areas tend to reflect more light um, and the, the, the contrast with the rounded areas in the fabric. This is 
um, permanent. Um, if the if it's done with a, a thermoplastic fiber, which it often is, and the um, the roller is is hot. Glazing is uh, also is a calendar finish that changes the luster. <clears throat> the fabric is treated with a resin chemical and passed through two rollers. And one roller moves at a much higher speed that essentially polishes the surface of it. If it is a, a resin, it's durable over time, so it will last the life of the garment. If it's a starch or a wax, it can be temporary. Glazed chintz and, and polished cotton are plain weave fabrics used for apparel and upholstery and window treatments that you might see. Um, you, there's also a term called glazing that you may have experienced if you've used a, a hot iron on a fabric and kept it pressed down too long. So if you have thermoplastic fibers and, and you do that, you're essentially flattening those fibers. Um, and that's where you get those glazed marks with a, with a hot iron where it starts to reflect light differently. Saray is a, another um, permanent calendar finish. Uh, Saray means wax in, in French. So it gives, Saray gives a really wet look, like a very high shine to something. Um, so it's changing the, the luster of a fabric. This is a hot metal roller that slightly melts and flattens the surface of thermoplastic synthetic fibers. So it produces this really high gloss look. And you can imagine when it melts and, and flattens, um, it creates a uh, larger surface area across it. Um, and so you can make fabrics wind and waterproof using this um, heated saray finish. You can, I talked about um, heat affecting thermoplastic fibers. You can also pressure emboss uh, fabrics. This can change the look, so it changes the surface texture, it can change the luster, but embossed finishes um, are typically calendared and it, it creates a flat or, or raised design on fabrics. You can use pressure, but frequently these, these are heat set in some way. A fabric passes through um, one flat roll and one engraved metal roller. So one's applying pressure, the other is pressing into the fabric, um, making um, two or three designs across the surface. If it's thermoplastic, it can be a permanent finish, um, depending on how long you keep the, the item. Um, but again, if you're using the, the heated rollers with thermoplastic fibers that are treated with a resin, it, it should make it permanent over time. Burnout um, is a different series. So this isn't a, a calendared type of finish. This is what we call a subtractive finish. Burnout changes the, the look and the luster and the drape. Um, and uh, frequently we associate burnout with, with velvet fabrics. So you can have a, a velvet fabric um, that's a full velvet, like we looked at it class, in class. Um, all You have a pile surface all across it, but it's blended with a couple of fibers. And one of those fibers would be a, a rayon or cotton or cellulosic based fiber. And you print on a, on whatever pattern you choose, a sulfuric acid. So sulfuric acid will destroy rayon or cotton, but it doesn't destroy polyester or silk. Those are resistant. So the areas um, where you print the chemical will dissolve fibers, and then you keep the pile on the other areas where the, the chemical hasn't um, affected it. The uh, on the, the left, you can see just a burnout fabric. This isn't a pile fabric. So this is a, a blended, so the fibers are blended, um, but in the areas where the chemical is printed, you can see it, it creates a sheerness 
in the fabric. You may have some, you know, t-shirts like this that have sheer areas and areas that are more opaque. Um, and you can see in those sheer areas, the there's uh, the ba or the more synthetic based uh, fiber remains. So that's the first part of our aesthetics video. You need to understand what the purpose of aesthetic finishes are. Um, classify them by their durability over time and know what each finish, what the intention is for, for the product. So why would a manufacturer, why would a brand or retailer um, spend the time to to time and money to um, apply a finish. And if finishes are related to particular fibers, like are finishes related to cotton, um, and why is that? Or um, do you need a thermoplastic type of fiber to actually make that finish happen?